about just a little over two years ago, this green roof went in and it's 45,000 square feet, so we're talking about an acre, and it is a combination of extensive, which is a shallow profile roof, about four inches, and an extensive system. And the goal of the project was definitely to, um, you know, increase energy efficiency in the building. They have a, sort of a mandate throughout the organization to, to do that, and they're working towards LEED certification in all of their buildings, so it was part of that. What they really wanted to do, they wanted to be a leader in the field and show, you know, and demonstrate through this leadership that they can do the right thing and they can provide these other amenities through things like this 45,000 square foot roof. So the big story, of course, is the stormwater story, and it does mitigate uh, an amazing amount of stormwater. But there's also other amenities that are happening up there. There's biohabitats that are being created. The, the birds, the bees that um, are on this roof, the insects, it's incredible, it really is. Um, it's also filtering the air, and it's uh, mitigating the urban heat island effect. Um, PHS also, we're lucky to run the tours, the public tours of the Green Roof. So um, we do monthly tours and then we do special arrangement tours like this one today. Um, and about, you know, o well over a thousand people have seen the roof as part of these tours. Um, and I'm just remembering a tour that I did in August, last August, and it was a very, very, very warm day. And you go from the sidewalk you know, in the city and you go up to this green roof and it was amazing the difference. It was just like this lovely time up on the roof and the weather was just very nice. Such a contrast. So when you, when you hear about that heat island effect, it was, it was physically demonstrated that day. It was pretty amazing. So let's see, what else can I tell you about the roof? The roof was um, designed by Roof Meadows. Charlie Miller, he, um, I don't know if any of you are aware of Charlie Miller. He's, nationally, internationally known. He basically, you know, brought the technology, the knowledge from Germany about 20 years ago to the United States, and he's um, based here in Philadelphia. And he does a great job on, on lots of projects everywhere. And so he was the main, you know, his group was the main people for this roof. Furbish Construction did the installation. Um, and uh, Pico was amazing in bringing all these different people to the table that needed to be there. And they brought, also brought PHS in to, um, to look and see how the whole thing was put together. And then um, we also serve as to oversee the management, the maintenance of the group, and the public access. I'll just mention that PICO, one of the goals of the project was to provide that public access because they wanted to be a leader in the field. They realized early on that the design needed to, to include a place for people. So, which is very unique, especially on a roof of that size, to be able to have public access to it. So there is a plaza, and there are the intensive planted areas, the deeper planting, provide um, native grasses and perennials, and it's sort of a little bit more interest. And then the sedum area, the extensive, extensive area is the sedum, and that's very interesting as well, because there's over a dozen varieties of, of sedum on the roof. And um, we're seeing all sorts of things now that it's been established for a little while. Um, in certain areas, um, it, it stays wetter on the roof than other areas, which was kind of a surprise to me. But because of all the mechanical equipment that, it, that are up there, there's a chiller, for instance. And so there's sort of a moisture in the air that happens. And so the soil in that area is becoming deeper and moister because of this mechanical equipment. And so it's kind of interesting because well, right now we're seeing weeds that are happening there that are thriving because we didn't plan for that depth of soil and that condition in that area. So the sedum are sort of, they're still there, but they're kind of dying back a little bit. But we're realizing we can plant other things in that space. So once um, once we're, we're, we're set with removing the weeds is what we're kind of challenged with now. We're going to put in some other plants in that, in that small area. And I'm kind of excited to see how they're going to do because it still is a shallow profile, but I think we do have uh, opportunity to put a more diverse planting in that one area. And the other thing that's interesting and happening up there is um, in the intensive areas, you'll notice in the planting beds, um, we've got a lot of grasses and things like that. And the schizocarium, the little blue stem, is starting to um, it's reseeded into the sedum area. And I thought it wouldn't last very long. I thought it would just die out because it would be too dry or it just would make it, but it's been making it and it's starting to sort of seed in and establish. And 
hasn't been that long, so we'll have to see how things turn out. But again, this is sort of another learning to see. We didn't think it was going to do well there, but it may survive. So we're expanding our, our knowledge and breadth of, of green roof plants. Um, I'll also mention at the Morris Arboretum, just in Philadelphia, but a little bit on the outskirts, uh, that's part of the University of Pennsylvania, they have a new horticulture center. And on several of their um, operations buildings, they have green roofs. And um, Louise Clark, who is the person maintaining those spaces, she's trying everything. It's a, it's a shallow profile roof, and she's planting so many different things. And it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that study as well. Um, that's a little aside, sorry. Um,